general theme for the year, Thy Kingdom Come. And uh, one of the things we're looking at right now is uh, our worship of the king. You know, this is not like a political kingdom where we just uh, submit. Uh, this is the king of kings and lord of lords. And he rightfully uh, demands and expects our, our worship, and, and so it should be. And uh, in looking at worship, uh, I believe that as Jesus was preaching there in Matthew chapter 5 and 6 and 7, he was talking about some of the areas of, of worship. I was thinking just as we were singing this morning, uh, this is a subject you'll never know everything about. <laughs> you'll constantly be looking at it and, and thinking about it as to how we're to worship the Lord. Uh, last week we looked at some real basics from John 4, I think it is, where he says that we worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Uh, that, that's so important. Uh, our heart, uh, our spirit before God, and, and the truth. You know, that we know how to worship Him by the truth. Uh, thy word is truth. And unfortunately, oftentimes worship is twisted and, and distorted to heathenism, really. Uh, quite often, uh, people think that they have to appease God and, and make Him like them so that they can get what they want from Him. Um, uh, sometimes people think that worship is to please us. Listen, worship's not about us. It's about the Lord. And uh, whether we feel like it was a good time or not, uh, if our heart and the truth is right, uh, that's, that's the important thing. Real worship is always personal. E even when we meet together to worship the Lord, uh, it's personal. Uh, you can sit in a, you know, we call it a worship service. Uh, I was watching the news the other day, and they're having a, a, a funeral, and, and uh, the, the, uh, the picture said something about a, a, I can't remember what the next word was, but the worship place they met. Um, you know, it's not a place. It's not a gathering. It's personal. It's between you and God. And even if you were to gather with a thousand people, it's personal to you. And each one in that group of a thousand has to have a heart that's right towards God and be worshiping Him in spirit and, and in truth. Um, it comes from a relationship between God and us, between God and you. Uh, and that started, God started that. It's initiated by the Lord. Uh, we love him because he first loved us, the Bible says. God is love. Uh, the love doesn't spring from us. It springs from him. Uh, we glory in it. You know, we, we have thoughts like, behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us. We should be called the children of God. You know, we're blessed. And, and we pass it on to others. As we worship the Lord, others see it and are blessed. Let your light so shine before men. That they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Now, I'm, I'm going to ask you boys to put away the comic books, all right? Just put them under your chairs there, if you would, for me. <laughs> Thank you. It, and it's the main enemy of worship is hypocrisy. You know, we can. We can say all the right words and we can do all the right things and have a heart that's not right with God. And uh, we need to be careful as we think about worship. Worship is reverence paid to worth. Honor. Honoring the Lord. And in Matthew chapter 6, he talks about worshiping the Lord by our giving. But let's read Matthew 6 verses 1 through 4. Take heed that you do not your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise you have no no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth, that thine alms may be in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. Now alms... Uh, the word alms actually has to do with mercy. Uh, it's, it's showing mercy it, basically through, through giving. And the, the Bible teaches us that the, the main one we're giving to, whether we're giving to a poor person or giving to our church or you know, whatever it is, is to the Lord. Uh, we need to understand that we, we give to the Lord. Uh, Proverbs 3 verse 9 says, Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. Uh, you know, it's the Lord that gets first place. And in showing mercy to others, uh, we are honoring the Lord. It's out of worship uh, to Him that we give. 
Let me, let me read you a verse, a couple verses from Deuteronomy, uh, chapter 26. Deuteronomy 26, verse 10, he says, find it here. He says, Behold, I brought the first fruits of the land which thou, O Lord, hast given me. And thou shalt set it before the Lord thy God and worship before the Lord thy God. As we bring our offerings, uh, we worship the Lord. And thou shalt rejoice in every good thing which the Lord thy God hath, hath given unto thee. And you know, as, as we give to the Lord, it will bless the poor. Because we see God showed mercy to me, we'll be willing to show mercy uh, to others. You know, none of us deserve good. We all think we do. You, you ask people, oh yeah, I've been good. <laughs> uh, Doyle asked somebody if they thought they were going to heaven. Oh yeah, you know, I'm, I'm really good. <laughs> and we all think that. Uh, but other people know otherwise. And uh, God knows otherwise. Uh, we don't deserve God's blessing, but he shows us mercy. And he shows us grace. And that's the way we need to give. We need to give, uh, give unto the Lord and it'll bless others. Uh, many Proverbs, uh, Proverbs 14 he that presseth the poor reproacheth his maker. But he that honoreth him hath mercy on the poor. If you can honor the Lord, you'll have mercy on others. He that pity, I'm sorry, he that hath pity upon the poor lendeth unto the Lord. And that which he hath given will he pay him again. Listen, when you give, God says you're lending the money to him and, and he pays with lots of interest. Uh, there's a, God has, has a rule that uh, as we sow, we're going to reap. And we need to be people who give to worship the Lord. Uh, there, was a, there was a verse that we, I read from, uh, uh, well, no, let me read a, a verse from Deuteronomy 15, uh, verse 7. Getting ahead of myself here. He says, If there be among you a poor man of one of thy brethren within any of thy gates in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not harden thine heart, nor shut thine hand from thy poor brother. Thou shalt open thine hand wide unto him. Uh, we need to be givers. Now, he does say later, and Jesus quotes this in the New Testament. Uh, he, he says in, in verse 11 of Deuteronomy 15, the poor shall never cease out of the land. <laughs> There's always going to be poor people. Someone has said, if you, if you divided all the money of the world evenly amongst everybody, you give it a little bit of time, you'd have rich people and poor people. Now, they're just some of us, you, you know, they say money talks uh, to some people it only ever says goodbye. <laughs> uh, it, it makes, the Bible says it makes wings and flies away. And uh, money is not the thing that we want to live for. Giving, giving is an opportunity to worship the Lord. And we need to give for God's glory. You, you probably know Matthew 6, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Uh, Matthew 5, 16, he says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Uh, there's a group that... <coughs> promotes a thing they call Christian kindness. And uh, they encourage people to just do something nice for anybody, a stranger, anybody. Uh, you know, if they're short of some money uh, at the till, you know, pay for it. I had somebody do that for me the other day. I uh, couldn't pay for a credit card with, with a credit card, so somebody said, I'll, I'll pay for it. Now, they didn't, they didn't uh, take it as an opportunity of Christian kindness, but it, it was. And, uh, you know, when we do something like that, then we just say, well, listen, I'm doing that because Jesus has done good things for me or, you know, something like that. And uh, that's what we're talking about, giving, uh, giving to the Lord and giving for the glory of God. He, he says there in verse 2 of chapter 6 that if you give for the glory of men, he says, enjoy what you, you know, whatever happens because that's all you're going to get out of it. <laughs> uh, they have their reward. Yeah, if you're giving because... You think, oh, this will impress people. Uh, that's all the blessing you're going to get out of it. You won't get God's blessing. Um, give as an act of worship to God. Uh, it will bless the poor. Uh, it'll bless your church uh, if you're a giver. It will bless missions. You know, those who've, who've given their lives to go. And the Bible says it will bless you. If you're a giver, it's a funny thing. Giving, God, God's um, pattern of reaping what we sow if you're a giver, he says in Luke 6, 38, Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over, shall men give into your bosom. 
For with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. Now, he puts it another way in Proverbs where he talks about if you're stingy, you're going to lack. Uh, we need to be givers, and we need to do it as worship to the Lord. Now, most of our worship is not done in a worship service. Yeah, we meet together every once in a while, but uh, unfortunately, we've been misled by the, the heathen way of worship. Most of your worship is done by how you live your life. You know, what you do in your home, what you do at work, what you do in your mind, what you do with your time, uh, what you do with your money. Uh, if you're not worshiping God with your money, you're not worshiping God much. <laughs> uh, the reason so many of us are such poor Christians is that we don't worship God like we should in our daily lives. Uh, yeah, I mentioned hypocrisy is the enemy of worship. Well, it's true in, in every person's life. Uh, we can put on a show for others. Uh, you know, we come to church and, man, we're cleaned up and we smell good and look good. <laughs> you know, we hardly ever swear at each other or hit each other. Uh, you know, occasionally it, it happens, but, uh, you know, we're, we're pretty good around here. But that's, that's not the key. The key is our heart and the truth. Worship God in spirit and in truth. We can worship God by our giving. He goes on in chapter 6 and verse 5. We also worship God in prayer. This is so important. God wants us to be people who pray. Let's read uh, Matthew chapter 6, starting in verse 5. And notice he doesn't say if you pray. He says, when thou prayest, <laughs> thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret. And thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions, as the heathen do. For they think that they shall be heard of their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them. For your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. I mean, let me just stop reading there. You know, praying... There's some errors that are common. It's so common, Jesus brings them out. One is praying to be heard of men. He says, that's why hypocrites pray. Now, you see illustrations of that on the news and different things. There's, there's people who, certain religions, uh, they wear special clothes and they'll stand in the corner and they'll bob up and down and they'll, they'll call out a, a prayer for sometimes for many minutes or, or even hours. Uh, that's to be seen of men. Uh, there's people who have uh, um, a way of, of praying that it, it seems like, you know, we can't judge a person's heart, uh, that they're praying even in, in Christian circles where it just seems to be words uh, for people to hear. When uh, some years ago, my, my sister asked her son, who was about two or three, uh, to pray for the meal, David. And uh, he, he prayed like this. This is exactly what he said. Our dear Lord and Heavenly Father, and this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and this, amen. Now he's two. He did the best he could. But you know, I think sometimes our words are kind of like that. You know, we just, we could be saying anything because it doesn't mean much. We need to be careful that we're praying from our heart. Now, he's learned to pray since then. He's about 40 now. But, uh, <laughs> praying just to be heard of men. Prayer needs to be simple and sincere. Uh, we don't have to know special words. There doesn't have, there's, no, there's a little bit of a format that we'll look at here in Jesus' model. But we don't want to be like hypocrites. We don't want to be hypocrites. The, the other one is praying vain repetitions. And he says that's, that's like the heathen there in verse 7. Uh, you, you know, there's... There's heathen religions where they make a prayer wheel, they call it. And they spin that thing around, and that's supposed to be prayers going up. Every time it goes around, that's a prayer. You talk about vain repetition. Uh, a similar thing to that would be prayer beads or, or things where, uh, you know, written prayers where it's, you know, it's just kind of words. That vain means empty, uh, empty repetition. Uh, listen, God isn't dead. God isn't deaf. Uh, we need to pray from our hearts uh, to him. The other one that comes up, it's, it comes on later, verse 14. He says, For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. 
Uh, praying with sin in our heart is, is something that will hinder our prayers. Uh, we need to deal with, with sin. Uh, 1 Timothy 2.8, he says, I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. God wants us to pray uh, with our sin confessed. Now, the time to confess personal sin is not in public prayer. But we need to, to come before the Lord and make sure that uh, any sin in our heart is, is dealt with. And one of the areas that he's particularly talking about there is, are the sins between us. You know, he says, without, uh, without wrath. One of the main things that makes us angry is other people. Uh, we, know, we need to make sure we're right with other people when, when we pray. Uh, without doubting. Uh, you know, we don't want to just pray and think, oh, well, God will never answer that. Uh, and by the way, no is an answer. Uh, some of you kids are still learning that, but um, yeah, no is an answer. And sometimes God says, wait. Don't you hate that? We'll see. <laughs> you know, when, when parents say that, well, God sometimes says that. We'll see. Uh, but sometimes God says yes. And uh, we need to understand that uh, we need to pray in faith uh, believing. Th there's a verse we, we've been learning uh, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. That's what he's talking about when he says we need to pray without anger. Take care of those in prayer first, personally. Uh, and then uh, you'll, be, you'll be clear to, to pray. We worship God by prayer and by faith. And he gives us the pattern for prayer there in verse 9. After this manner, therefore, pray ye. Our Father which art in heaven... Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. A very simple pattern, isn't it? Not very long, not very wordy. And no fancy words or anything. And he says, after this manner. This is oftentimes called the Lord's Prayer. This is not actually the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer would be John 17 when Jesus actually prays. This is a pattern. If he was praying here, he would have said, Father. That's what he says in John 17, not our Father. He would never have said, forgive my sins. <laughs> and Jesus had no need to, to pray that. Now, this is a model prayer. It's for us to, to use as a model. I know sometimes people quote it as, as a prayer, and I don't guess there's a lot of harm in that, but that's not why Jesus gave it. It wasn't for us to memorize it and say it back to him. Uh, there, there's two major divisions here, the glory of God and the needs of men. And I find that the part that we often ignore is the glory of God. I, I find myself doing that. Uh, we often forget that in praying, we need to honor God's name. Uh, we need to, uh, to thank him and, and, and adore him, worship him. And he, he talks about hastening his kingdom. You know, we need to be praying about God's influence in the world. That we would be uh, seeing him uh, change our hearts, change our families, change our country. Listen, uh, our country needs changing. Uh, we need to be praying about that. And uh, obeying his will, living a godly, godly life. Thy will be done. Praying about these things in, in uh, the glory of God. We're pretty good about praying about the needs of men. You know, we, we ask and God tells us to. Ask and it shall be given you. Uh, we need to confess our sins. Uh, God says in, in Psalm 66, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. You know, if we haven't confessed that sin, God says, let's, let's talk about the sin. Uh, that's, that's what he's waiting to hear. Uh, we need to confess our sin. We need to pray for others. Uh, the Bible says, I, I exhort that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. We need to be praying for others. We need to be praying uh, and asking God for ourselves. John 15, 7, he says, If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you. Now, what a blessing it is uh, to be able to, uh, to go to God in prayer. Now, one, of the, uh, one of the songs that, that we're going to be singing later is, What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. And that's exactly right. Uh, we worship Him by our prayers. Uh, let me give you some, some prayer suggestions. 
Now, these are not original with me, but they've been a blessing to me. Number one, let your gaze be on God and your glance on your problem. Don't focus on your problems. Focus on God. Talk to God. Focus on Him. Worship God. Don't worship your problems. Listen, you, you think if you got a solution to that problem, everything will be all right. And you, sometimes you can be as wrong as wrong can be. But worship the Lord. He'll, he's the one we trust. Let your gaze be on God, your glance on your problem. Number two, let prayer be your first choice, not your last. You know, you know what we do sometimes? We frantically rush around trying to solve the problem. Then we say, oh, well, I guess, I guess we should pray about it. <laughs> Nothing else has worked. I guess we better pray. <laughs> you know, don't make it your last choice. Make it your first choice. Uh, don't make it when your car has crashed in the ditch. Make it when you get in the car and start the engine, you know? Um, the Bible says, in all thy ways acknowledge him. It says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Thirdly, pray more from conviction than from crisis. Now, we're going to pray in crisis. That, that's not a problem. But pray before the crisis comes. Uh, Doyle and I have three children. Listen, <coughs> it's too late for us to pray that they grow up to be good people. <laughs> They're grown up. The time for us to pray that, and we did. Before they were born, when they were babies, when they were little children, praying about their character, praying about who they'd marry. Listen, it's too late when you pray, oh God, don't let them marry that person. <laughs> it's too late <laughs> to pray then. Uh, pray from conviction, not just from crisis. Uh, granted, we, we will pray in crisis. Fourthly, let your prayers be filled with praise. God says, in everything give thanks. If we understand the concept, there's no situation where God is not working. There's always something we can praise the Lord for. We, Romans 8, 28, all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Uh, you know, even in bad things. I, I know you, you probably don't feel like praising the Lord and the dentist just drilling on your tooth, but something good is supposed to happen you know, if he does his job right. And uh, life is like that a lot of times. Uh, we need to be praising the Lord. Fifthly, pray retail, not wholesale. Now, what I mean by that is be specific. I've heard people pray, you know, God bless everybody and help all the missionaries. And, yeah, and that we pray so general that God really couldn't even answer that prayer. Um, we need to pray for people. We need to pray for countries. We need to pray for specific things. You know, as parents, our children don't come up to us and say, Dad, would you bless me? <laughs> I have kids, you know, and when they were little, they'd come and say, Dad, can I have a dog? Can I have a lolly? Can we go to the store? You know, they'd ask specific things. And uh, then I had to give an answer. We'll see. No. <laughs> uh, pray, pray specifically. You appreciate it when you know someone's praying for you by name. I have people I pray for every day. And yeah, I don't know what power I have with God, but God tells me to pray. And uh, there's, there's just a, a blessing in knowing that someone is praying for us. Finally, pray in the Spirit and by the Spirit. Uh, Ephesians 6, 18 says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Praying in the Spirit. Uh, not just words. Uh, not just putting our mouth into gear and, and, and turning our brain loose. Um, Romans 8, 26, he, he says that the Spirit helps our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now, those groanings are not ours. They're the Holy Spirit helping us as we pray. And the Holy Spirit can help you uh, to know how to pray and help you in your, in your praying. But we do it as worship to the Lord. We're saying, Lord, I don't understand everything. I want to bring it to you. And he says, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Lord, I, I don't know how this situation should turn out. But Lord, here, here's the situation that we're concerned about. We, we, we ask your, your help. Um, worship. Yeah, what a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Praying is, is worship. Giving is worship. Let's look at just a couple more verses before we quit this morning. Verse 16, fasting. He says, moreover, when you fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, 
For they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thine head and wash thy face, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy Father which is in secret. And thy Father which, is, which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. A fast, we, we think of that as going without, without food. And that's pretty much what it is. But it, it's not, we're not doing it for a show. And we're not doing it to, to try and force God to do something for us. Uh, there were people in that time, and, and even now today, I assume, who, oh boy, you know they're fasting. You know, oh, they, they're, they look, oh, and, you know, and they act. And, and uh, you know, everybody knows what they're doing. Oh boy, aren't they spiritual? They've been fasting for, well, at least two hours, you know. And uh, <laughs> Moses, I don't know if you've, you've read in the Old Testament, he fasted 40 days. And then something happened, he went 40 more days. I don't know how that worked. I think God was supernaturally in that. But as a Christian, we need to be uh, realizing that when we're talking about fasting, this is not something we do to get something from God. It's not something we do to impress people. It's just setting aside uh, our life and focusing on God and preparing ourselves to, to pray. But it has to be genuine. It has to be from the heart. It's the same for giving. It's the same for praying, isn't it? God, man looks on the outside. God looks on the heart. And it's important. Worship comes from the heart. We worship God in spirit and in truth. Our hearts have to be changed by the word of God. That's why it's so important, folks, that we're in God's word. Not just once in a while. You can find devotion books, you know, devotions in two minutes a day. Man, you're really killing a big one. You have five minutes a day. Uh, we need to be reading and, and memorizing and meditating on God's Word. That's how God changes us. Uh, I heard of a young man who, he said to his grandfather, he said, you know, I read the Bible and I don't remember it and I don't see what good it does me. His dad, his grandfather had a, a sieve. You know what a sieve is? You, you wash things out. It was all dirty. He said, let's go down to the, to the creek here. He said, pour some water through that sieve. Oh, it went right through. <coughs> pour some more water through that sieve. Went right through. He had him do it about 10 times. He says, now, what's, what's changed? He said, the sieve is clean. <laughs> and you may not remember everything you read, but it'll keep you clean. That's what God's, God's Word does. And, and I'll guarantee you, you'll remember more than, than you realize. And God's Holy Spirit can use it in your life. That's, that's a key. You see, we worship God in spirit and in truth. And uh, we just can't, he's not just talking about your spirit. He's talking about your spirit in relationship to God. There has to be truth there. And, and there has to be a heart for the Lord. God honors a heart that's right with him. And this morning, uh, you know, we, we need to take this personally. Uh, you don't have to worry about me. And I don't so much have to worry about you, although I am, I am your pastor. Uh, we need to, to take our own responsibility before God. And we need to make sure that, I need to make sure my heart is right with God. You need to make sure your heart is right with God. And God's Holy Spirit will bring things to your mind. Listen, don't ignore Him. Deal with it. If there's a person that you've wronged or that's wronged you, God says there's a way to deal with that. If there's something that God wants you to do or, or not to do, God can help you deal with that. Uh, we need a heart that's right with God. We need to walk with Him in spirit and in truth. It, it affects every area of life. You know, we look at a few things here in Scripture, but it affects every area of our life. And God wants our worship. God deserves our worship. Someday in heaven, we'll understand it all. Uh, we'll, we'll know more. But uh, for right now, uh, we just have to get into God's Word and, and worship Him as best we can in spirit and, and in truth. And I want to encourage you this morning. God says, give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. A heart that's right with God. Is God in control of your life? Is your Christianity real? Is it from God? Or is it just an outward show? Is it something that within your, your heart you're thinking, this is not right, this is not right, this is not right? Or is it one where God's Holy Spirit is confirming with you that this is right, confirming. Uh, he, he talks about that in 1 John. I won't try to find it right now. Uh, we need to know the Lord. 
And we need to worship the Lord in, in spirit and in truth. Uh, let's go to the Lord in, in prayer this morning uh, with our heads bowed and in an attitude of prayer. Listen, you, you do business with God. Uh, there's going to be some things that God is bringing to your mind. There's people. There's situations. Father, we are so grateful that you love us. Lord, you know us. You know every bit about us. You know the dirt. You know our past. Lord, you know what we'll do tomorrow. And you love us. And you've showed that by sending your son. Father, help us to be right with you. Help us to worship you. Help us to lay aside the, uh, the things of sin. Uh, Lord, help us to walk with you. Father, I pray if there are those this morning here that are not saved, that they would understand they need to give their heart to you, that they need to be born again. Lord, help us to know uh, the confidence that only you can give, the peace that passes understanding. Father, I pray that you'd help our families. God, help us to, uh, to honor you. Help our community. Uh, Lord, there's so many hurting people that need you. Lord, help us to, to reach out to them. And God, help us as individuals to worship you in spirit and in truth. We, we love you, Lord, and we, we pray these things in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Let's, uh, let's do take our songbooks and go to that song. It's page 345.